and say, baby, won't you be my girl? Would you meet me at the Friday dance and give romance a whirl? Let's take a chance, our happiness sake, baby, won't you be my girl? Won't you be my girl? I said, baby, won't you be my girl? This is playable enough for me. I'm never going to limp in. I'm always going to open. Stick with the same 15. This song has me so mellow, I don't even want to play a hand, but I have a pocket pair on the button, so I don't think I could forgive myself if I don't. I'm just going to play a bit, bit more passive, and hopefully Ryan doesn't three bet our shoes off. All right, so I went from clearly calling to folding to now clearly calling again, probably. Now I gotta act like I'm strong because I just did a hand gesture. Fuck it, whatever. Thought process right now. Be chill. Don't give away anything. Be very, very chill. And we're just gonna check to the pre-flop aggressor. Check. Um, I'm not doing anything other than checking. All right, so that was a flop, flop made in heaven for me. I'm definitely gonna be betting. I think that I need to size up a little bit to try to get some people out of this hand and just to get value before the turn peels off a lot of crazy turn cards. So I'm gonna go with 65 in the pot. I'm gonna go with a $40 bet. I like this song so much, I'm actually kind of sad. I have to talk through this action and pause it. Um, I get the sense that Kato is probably seabedding this board too much. It's just a it's just a flop that multi-way is gonna really favor, particularly the big blind and the button, but basically everybody else in the hand besides him. Probably everybody in the hand can have all sets. And the only straights that are probably around are in the button and blind ranges, maybe just button and big blind. I have a hand that if we were heads up would be a slam dunk call in position, but with the two ranges behind me that do have all those sets, do have some straights, have combo draws that will raise uh, us off at a pretty high frequency. And, and more than that also, we'll just have a pair or a pair and a draw pretty high frequency. Uh, just becomes a super slam dunk fold, but uh, it is going to be interesting to see how these spots with Kato develop since overall it seems like he is willing to fight and given that he had a previous hand where he like raised king six suited and called out a position uh, where I don't believe that's a thing, um, I suspect that him along with Drew are going to be the ones kind of battling the most, but this spot, easy fold. I'm definitely gonna raise it up here. Lots of turns we don't wanna see. We don't really wanna see any diamonds. Don't really wanna see six, eight, even nine. Um, only hand I really have to be concerned about is like six, eight, which most credibly probably Ryan could have, but six, eight is I, super unlikely. So I definitely have to go for a raise here. Kato's bet is pretty large and into three people signifies a lot of strength to me. Um, and he was the preflop aggressor. I think he really put him maybe on some over pair here. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go with the raise. I do this a lot too on my vlogs with a lot of draws too. So I think I can still get some value from, from raising here. So let's see, how much do I wanna raise? First, I've gotta calculate the pot, which is the last person's bet times three, plus what's in the pot, 15, 15 150, 60, pot, 210, 210. How much percent of the pot do I wanna really raise? I think like I think fifty percent should do. So let's raise it up to a little more than a little more than fifty percent. Let's do let's do one hundred and ten dollars. Um, I take back everything I said pre-flop. I hate everyone, and Kato admitted to me that he traffics humans before we started playing. All right, got some uh, aggression from Greg headed my way, but my hand is 
pretty solid and it's pretty hidden. I was the one that opened pre-flop to 15 and there are not that many combinations of this holding that you would expect someone to do that with. So I have a few options here. He could easily have two pair using the blinds. He could easily have a flush draw. He could have a flop straight. So I think I'm gonna try to walk a fine line between getting too wild because although my hand has potential and it's pretty good right now, it can be beat by a lot. I still have position. I'm just gonna flat call it, see a good turn. Yeah, the moment I made that bet, <laughs> I realized it was a stupid bet. Uh, I really should have gone a little bit larger because it's essentially a min raise. So, a little bit of a blunder there. Ten of hearts. Doesn't, to me, doesn't really change anything unless he has pocket tens. Just gonna go ahead and bet for value here. About 316 a pot. I'm gonna go for $200 here. I think I have the best hand here. And I also think that if I make this call, if he has me beat, I may get a free check through on, to show down on the river. This is quite a bit of money to be calling off with a pair, but I could still hit a straight. And he could easily have a hand like five, six, or just complete air. Let's see what he's got. Probably one of the worst river cards we could see here, but you know, completing the diamond draw and we don't block any of the diamonds. So do we, it's a question of do we go into a check call mode or do we go for a block or bet kind of thing here? I think maybe I think probably we're gonna go for a bet fold line. And that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna bet. Let's see. You guys probably think I'm, I'm contemplating some really deep things, but I'm just trying to remember what's in the fucking pot. 60 on the flop. I raise 110, 110, 220, 280. I bet 200, 280, 200, 680 in the pot. 680 in the pot. How much do I have left in my stack here? 680 in the pot, and I have around $500 left. I think I'm going to go for a small bet. Bet fold. I could do another 200 here. Third pot size bet and then fold to a re raise. Alright, this is an interesting situation. He could just be trying to squeak as much value out of me as he can. Maybe hand like ace 10, continued on, continued on the turn, betting because he hit his 10, but he could have the, the diamond flush as well. Um, a hand like six eight has already been there the whole time, but there's just so much money in this pot. There's four, six, so I have to call 200 to win 800. Uh, it also kind of feels like a blocking bet. So I think I'm gonna pay Greg off and maybe I have the winner. Oh my fucking God, that was exhilarating. I really wish that Greg had gone all in on that last hand so he could have said Greg goes all in but um, now here in this spot kid has been very active I think that having position 
Um, getting involved with this hand is super reasonable, but I think three betting makes more sense than calling, just because I am in the cutoff, not the Biden. Um, I'm gonna size up a little bit against Cato, just because I think that he is continuing a bit too wide here. And I'm gonna go to 55. So 55 is the bet? Queen Jack off. Pretty hand. Um, something I definitely would open on the button was I'm not really sure what to do with Queen Jack off when the low jack opens, but now that Matt here has three bet, I think this is an easy decision for me. And we're just gonna fold. All right, so we have an open under the gun. We have a three piece and we are out of here. All right, well, I think I'm going to take a play out of Greg's playbook and try to do the same thing to Matt that he did, just did to me. So I'm not at all surprised to see Cato call pre. Uh, and I would expect him to check range on this flop. Again, these monotone boards are a little bit tricky, but I think that given it is ace high and a three bet pot, he's gonna actually have fewer flushes here, um, particularly with how the exact cards on the board are laid out. And I think we just get to get away with betting small here at a pretty high frequency, just based on how wide he seems to be continuing the three bets, how wide he's opening, and still win this pot at a decent frequency without really committing that many chips. He's still gonna have uh, he's still going to be more concentrated towards suited hands, so he doesn't have a ton of like single diamond holdings that we need to deny equity to. Um, so going smaller seems pretty reasonable to me. There is 120 in the pot. I am just going to go with one third here. I bet 40. 40 is bet. This is the second ace high at monotone board that him and I have played together. First time he checked it back to me after being the aggressor pre-flop. So I have no diamond, just gonna get this one tossed away. Like I said before, um, more on the button, we're raising any ace and too many kings. 15. All right, so Ryan has opened the button and I am not going to play this one. This is another terrible hand, but Heads up against Apollo doesn't sound too bad, and it's only $10, so we'll see a flop. Hope to get lucky. Hey, Jeff. Um, so our hand is almost, it's not quite so strong. I mean, I wish we, I almost prefer to not have a club here to have him have more continues. So I may be a jerk in, then I'm missing out so much value. We're so deep. I can't be this sneaky and silly. Let me just bet. Let me just not overthink shit. Done. All right. Uh, this looks like a one fourth pot size online tournament bet. Starting to learn some of these concepts, but to me, that's just a very small bet at a live cash game. And definitely want to protect my hand a little bit. And I definitely want to get money in the pot. I'm also out of position, so I want to take the initiative because if the turn might check through and that would be a disaster. So he's probably betting that with 100% of his range. So we'll see if he has anything worth playing this pot for. 40. What is that? 
Right, so normally live, I'd be looking at somebody's body language like while they were thinking and raising, but I'm trying to not read lips or I'm, I'm, I'm that nice of a guy. I'm not cheating, but I, so I'm not looking at him, not trying to read his lips. So um, I don't really have a feel for what this guy looks like other than, like I said before, he admitted to me before we started filming that he, he's a human trafficker. Um, we're going to call on him. You know, we, we easily can continue on a club and we got the nuts. What is this, 40? Not the best card, not the worst card. We're gonna follow through with the plan of continue to bet. He obviously has a piece of the board if he's staying around. So hopefully he has a hand like ace queen without the ace of clubs. And that's what I'm gonna target. King, queen, ace, queen. If he has a flush, he'll let me know real quick. Normally live, I remember the suits of each card before I double check just every hand so I don't have to look at my cards again when I'm mid-hand to remember which is which. You know, when you have a pocket pair, look at like spade, diamond or whatever. So I actually forgot I just took a peek when he was when he was looking to put his music back on. What, which club I had? If it was the Ace or the Queen, and it's obviously not as cool that it's the Queen, but he's three betting other suited Aces ever. I, I don't know, dude. I'm just talking shit. Go. All right. So I don't think it would stick around with Jack King simply because there's already a flush out there unless he had a nice club to go with it. I'm still putting him on the ace queen, king queen, jack queen kind of range. 10 queen obviously would be a tough one, but he's not gonna get too wild with the straights and flushes out there. I do think that if I check here, it might look a little weak. Maybe take a stab at it, but I also think that I can get him to call another decent 150 size bet. If I check and get re-raised though, it'll be a disaster. So I think I'm just gonna check call. We're, we're definitely not checking back. We're definitely not. Um, we're gonna bet. I don't know how big. I need to try to figure out what he's just giving up or if he's trying to. He bet so big on the turn that, I mean, an appropriate size I reckon Hold on, I need to think. Well, that's what the show is for, to think out loud. I'm trying to remember in my stupid brain how big he's supposed to go if he check raises a flop in general. And I, when the flush gets there, I think it's usually smaller. I'm surprised he bet big, but again, we're in some wacky live world. We're not in some GTO world. So I don't know, even though I'm thinking along those guidelines. All that said, I have a club, I block that. I highly doubt he's trapping with clubs. I, he probably just has some give up. I'm just gonna fuck with him and bet small and hope that he 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 punts. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is a bet. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is a bet. Okay. <laughs> I call twenty-five. <laughs> Too bad. He's like, are you sure that's the bet? <laughs> I was like, huh? was that a jam or is that a... <laughs> Wait, I don't want to take, I'll tell you later. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, if these sunglasses are really in the pot, we're fucking playing this hand, but I can't bring myself to three about it, so we're gonna, we're gonna just call. Please make a pair. It's fucking on. Check. Um, I'm simplifying and I'm gonna bet big uh, on this board a lot. I can't tell if this guy knows that he's allowed to overbet this board or if he just really doesn't want me to have sunglasses. But uh, I think second pair here is good enough to feel one at least anyway. I'm just uh, in the back of my head wondering how much money I'm gonna lose trying to win a pair of cheap sunglasses. Uh, so, I've talked about this before on other Poker Out Louds, but I don't think we've had a spot today where a flush card comes in. And what this sometimes, occasionally allows is for some leads, but uh, I don't think this is one of them. Ryan's gonna have a lot of flushes too. And um, it's kind of a brick other than bringing the flush. I think maybe if it brought straights in, it'd be slightly better. Uh, I also don't think I even have a spade in hand, and obviously if I do, it's a, it's a deuce anyway. So from an equity standpoint and the fact that I have shit on value, it doesn't really make sense to leave this card. Um, I don't know what took him so long to check on the turn. Probably he's explaining what he was thinking, which is the purpose of the show, but he's always checking. Uh, the spade kind of bailed us out because, not bailed us out, but if it wasn't a spade, I'd be more likely to, to you know, blast again, and, and um, we, we may be good now, but also if a spade comes in, and then I like our hand even more, obviously. And also, if he has a seven or jack, um, we can bluff him off many rivers, and, and then I would play ace x like this, because he has more play. Yeah, yeah, I, this all makes enough sense to me that I'm going with it. Unfortunately, I think this is a line where we're gonna lose this pot a lot. Ryan's gonna have quite a few checkbacks on this turn. And on this river, he's going to make second pair a lot that I don't really think that we're gonna get to fold. Um, if we wanted to try, I would much rather have just like king high with the king of spades that blocks king queen, king jack. Um, I think this hand does have some showdown value. I'll be pocket pairs, some seven X. Um, but yeah, we're gonna lose this hand a lot, unfortunately. I was uh, I was starting to get excited about maybe winning sunglasses, but I, I think the best line here is definitely to check and uh, most likely just check fold. So you have to work backwards from when you are gonna bluff. It's like, all right, what better hands do we need to fold them off that that we can fold them off, and it's clearly a seven or jack here. He's definitely, I would expect not fold the queen unless I way, way over bet. These are all exploitative lines I'm thinking along here as I'm saying this, but um, I don't think he'd fold the queen or an ace, but I think he has enough jacks and sevens that, um, that it's worth it to um, get rid of him. So Ryan bets 60 into uh, I think like 110-ish here. Yeah, 115. I think he's pretty value heavy here. He has a lot of ASX checkbacks on turn. I don't think he's gonna find too many bluffs here. Um, if he does, he actually might want to start turning some pocket pairs into bluffs. So I, I do beat some hands, but um, pretty infrequently at this point. I think he just has a queen or an ace at a very high frequency. Uh, obviously, I really want to find a way to win this pot, but I, I just can't bring myself to check raise this terrible combo. I wanted to win him so bad. It was a splash pot combo. Hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs>
I win? Yeah, yeah, you won them. Deal or rob a pair. I tried really hard. No. <laughs> I was rooting for you. He already has a pair. <laughs> what? That's some bullshit. That's a bullshit. The... I have no more merch. Oh, fuck. I should have my card protectors. You should have fucking three bet free. <laughs> <laughs> Big one. This I'm never getting saucy with. All right, it has been a minute. I'm due for a hand, right? Let's see. Oh, that ain't great, that ain't great. I don't wanna play yet. I think I'm gonna wait one more hand and then I'm gonna be real impatient. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, so this is another ridiculous hand, but I'm gonna open it anyways, for fun. 13. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can play this one. Oof. All right, I've gotten a few of these today. Let's see if this one is the one that works out. I'm gonna go ahead and open the action, of course. Willing to call a three bet. So, um, Poker Beast VPIP is uh, really, really high. He's been in like the vast majority of hands that have been played, and uh, I'm really tempted to three bet here. But the thing is that uh, our hand sucks. So, yeah, the problem also is that he calls almost every single. Actually, I think he's called every single three bet. So we're not going to get folds, uh, which is kind of what the Sam wants to do because of bluff. So where are you going to fold? As Berkey would say, Kato's really feeling himself right now. Um, I was going to call or three bet with anything even remotely playable here. He's just got the so far tightest player on his left and the probably so far second tightest player in the blind. And uh, even though I wouldn't normally talk about Ryan this way, he, he's at least with card distribution playing pretty tight. So I think Kato's just kind of seeing if he can open the most hands. And um, yeah, I want to be involved too. We also just get a pretty standard flat here and so I'm not going to three bet this one I'm just going to flat and um, be happy to take basically the exact same spot I had the last time I had this hand. I'd like to share an excerpt from Rhea Konnikova's The Biggest Bluff. Um, I thought she was going to be here today so I so I read her book and she didn't show up so I was like Damn it, I like took notes and I like highlighted and stuff. But the one quote I'd like to share today, you know, I was really intimidated being here. And this one quote from her book really, really helped me out um, a lot. Yes, strip down the mythology around their greatness. They still have weaknesses. They are human first, players second. And though I came in today as a huge underdog, that quote gives me a lot of comfort. Um, because after all, they are only human. Kato's been playing super wide, which is so odd because he DM'd me on Discord and was like, Greg, tight is right. We should go into this and we should play tight. But he's been playing every goddamn hand um, with this suited ace wheel. Suited wheel ace? I think that's the terminology. I think we can go ahead and three bet bluff this and try to isolate someone heads up. So we're going to do 4x the sizing plus the collar, which is 15 times 4, 15 times 4, 60, 75. There we go. We got there, folks. 75 is the bet. I'm so glad Greg three bet because if he whipped a book out and then just folded, I was gonna fucking strangle him. I don't know what Greg has, but the fact that he pulled out a book and I'm assuming read a quote from it tells me that his hand is probably at the upper part of his range. Glasses are now involved in the pot. 
Let's see if I can't crack them. All right, so uh, this is pretty funny, obviously, but I think it's worth noting that it's much more likely for people to do sort of gimmicky stuff like this when they're at the top of their range than at the bottom or in the middle for sure. It's definitely polarizing. I think he's much more likely to really have it or just have some <laughs> total air ball, like he's just gonna turn over seven deuce maybe. Um, the cool thing about him being polarized here is that my hand becomes now a super slam dunk call just to pr pretty much try to smash and make value. The fact that Kato's in here too just gives us a better price. Um, he's even hit us with the double gimmick of the sunglasses. So, I mean, what am I really talking about here? I wouldn't, I wouldn't fold anything, let alone this hand. So we connect with our pair of fours here, one club on the board. This board is not good for my perceived range, which would mostly be like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, those kind of hands. But even those over pairs, I, oftentimes I'm still going to be up against one pair holdings or just complete misses. And I think any, you know, I can continue barreling on some good turns. So I'm going to go ahead and bet a third of the pot here. So I get the feeling that Greg wanted to pull out his book. This is not Rotella you can likely use often, but probably didn't pull out his book for aces, probably didn't pull it out for kings. Ace king suited, I could see. I could see that possibility, maybe seven deuce suited. I've already got myself into trouble once with him, and I could probably just fold this away and it would be the smart bet, but I think I might have the best hand. So I'm a little sad that Kato's calling here because I think this just has to push us out of the pot. But I, uh, just looking at Greg, I don't really think he has it. I mean, I don't feel super confident, but um, it just looks like he has a bit more tension and um, he's breathing pretty shallow. Um, and I just, I mean, I would love to just stick in the race here, but I'd much rather have some kind of blocker to Kato having something good here even if it was just like bottom pair that blocks sets, second pair that has sets, something like that. Uh, this hand's just gonna struggle so hard to win against both players because even when Greg has effectively air here, he's often got a backdoor, he can turn a top pair. And um, but I just don't see a clear path forward to winning, even though I would probably do something other than fold against just Greg here. This is the, the turn being the sum diamonds, this is not a turn I can barrel on. We've got our showdown value with bottom pair, and we're just going to see if we can get cheaply to the river. All right, well, I picked up some outs with that turn, and I still think that he has ace-king suited, maybe flopped a backdoor flush draw and wanted to continue betting. The question is, am I going to bet and defend the pot or try to push him off the hand and or just go to the river? I think I need to bet, especially if I think I have the best hand and especially since I picked up extra equity. Uh, I don't think it has to be all that big because I don't think he has anything. 125. 375 in the pot, Keto makes a small third pot bet here. What does he call in the flop? And then leads out on the turn for third of the pot. Like, yes, you could have some ace high floats here. Could be many draws of Jesus. This is one of those spots where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Here. And I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. <laughs> Literally got off a plane from Canada two hours ago. And now I'm playing poker with Kato and these huge crushers. Okay, what is he doing? Let's think, let's think, let's think. Could be a float. 
Ah, oh, but this is the fact. The thing is, it's just the board. Does the board hit his range hard? He does open Bunkov hijack. He opened. He opened hijack, but he's been playing pretty loose. So this could connect with his range pretty well. Does he does do this with two pair hands, mm -hmm. single pair hands? Wouldn't he want to protect against all the draws? Unless he's already got a main hand here. I guess the obvious open ender gets there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. And I have bottom pair. What am I doing? I have bottom pair. Just fold, Greg. Jesus Christ. Maze King of Spades. God damn it. Really? What? Really? No, I'm asking if that's what you had. Oh. Obviously not. What did you have? I had a pair. Oh, me too. <laughs> oh. <laughs>